This video was brought to you by GeneralPack.com, making power systems intuitive, open, and free to everyone, everywhere. Consider subscribing and supporting through Patreon.com slash GeneralPack. This is the mechanism for you to support us financially so we can continue making high quality power system video tutorials. Our corporate sponsor for this topic is Illumiax.com from Seattle, Washington. Contact them for industrial and commercial power system studies. Current Transformers Equivalent Circuit Model Part 1B. In Part 1B of this series, we shall continue from our previous part and talk about excitation current and the excitation curve in much more detail. Let's begin by considering the parameter that we've discussed before but in much greater detail which is the excitation current ie now this parameter as described before is responsible for the excitation of the ct core it it actually makes the ct work in real life but it is also the current that's lost through the magnetizing branch and corresponds to ct air so the more the excitation current, i.e., the more the errors or the more saturation that the CT will observe. Now the value of the excitation current should be kept as minimum as possible as explained in the previous uh, tutorial. Now the CT operation can be easily explained by the excitation curve. Now this curve shows the relationship between the voltage across the burden and the excitation current. Vs is the voltage across the excitation branch as pointed out by this diagram and also sometimes described as Ve uh, as an echo. So uh, just need to consider these values in a little bit more detail. Now keep in mind that the voltage across the burden is Vb and there is a difference between the voltage across the excitation branch, which we're calling Vs, and the voltage across the burden. And the difference comes from the fact that we have this Rs and Xl, the secondary winding resistance plus the leakage reactance, which that's how we're modeling it. Now, um, the difference here, how we calculate it is if we wanted to calculate the voltage across the burden well that simply equals the secondary winding voltage Vs minus the voltage drop across Rs plus XL right which is the current going through Rs and XL times the impedance of Rs plus XL so that is represented by the equation that you see now let's now consider an example of a CT excitation curve the excitation curve that we see here is a C400 2000 to 5 multi-ratio current transformer we see that it's multi-ratio because we see two curves and one curve is represents 2000 to 5 and another curve represents 300 to 5. Okay, now how would we know what the CT rating is? Well, we can uh, approximate uh, the CT rating pretty easily. So what we do is we look at, and we'll go over this in much more detail, but what we do is we look at the excitation current, which is the x-axis, and we look at the uh, secondary terminal voltage Vs which is the y-axis again the secondary terminal voltage is the same thing as the voltage across the burden which is a really important parameter okay so we need to find a way to use those two axes to determine what CT rating it is meaning if it's a C400, C800, C100 how do we know Okay, so the rule of thumb is this. We look at the excitation current and we look at that mark where it has 10 on it, so 10 amps. At that particular mark, where does the, the curve, uh, the exciting curve kind of meet? So when we look at the 10, we go all the way up and we find that it's approximately 496 volts. So 496 is more than 400 so what we can say is that this is definitely not a C800 not a C600 and it probably won't qualify as a C500 either 
but we can say that yeah this is a C400 with uh, quite a bit of margin so that is an approximate way to determine what type of DT rating it, it would be okay so we can go through this in much more detail if there is an interest of that now the the, the interesting thing here is that the second curve that we see that is ratioed at 300 to 5 it's a multi ratio current transformer that means that if we are looking at a ratio that is not the full ratio meaning it's a tapped ratio then the rating of the current transformer changes and so in this example at 10 amps exciting current it's definitely less than 100 volts as we change the ratio we also change the rating quite considerably so keep that in mind. Now the excitation impedance uh, can be obtained by dividing each value of voltage that we see on the graph with the uh, corresponding excitation current. And this results in the table that we see below. Now in this table what's interesting here is that the excitation impedance we see that it's a non-linear value. It uh, increasing it increases from 3000 ohms at 0.001 amp excitation current to a maximum of 8065 ohms at 0.025 amp exciting current. Now this is the point of maximum permeability and it is the same point that we can uh, that is is shown on the graph by drawing a tangent to the curve. This is the point which is termed as the knee point of the curve. Now the impedance value that starts to saturate from that point onwards onward, meaning that uh, once the impedance is uh, reaches at 49 ohms at 10 amps exciting current, um, anything beyond that or anything beyond the knee point of the curve, it becomes to give more errors. Now to summarize this discussion, and I know we'll be talking about this in much more detail later, we can say that the secondary voltage of the CT increases, right? Secondary voltage of the CT increases, then the exciting current increases as well, but only to the point of the knee curve. And then beyond that, the exciting current stabilizes to a constant value. We can observe a linear relationship, right? Linear relationship, proportional relationship, uh, between the terminal voltage VB or the voltage across the burden and the exciting current IE up to the knee point of the curve. Now this point is called the knee point voltage. Uh, this is a very very important parameter but uh, this is the exact point where the CT starts to exhibit nonlinear behaviors where a 10% increase in the secondary voltage causes an increase of the secondary current by 50 percent so therefore if we go above the knee point of the curve the exciting current will be abnormally high it is and it's required now we have to keep the exciting current as minimum as possible in order to avoid saturation. So anything above the knee point of the curve, we're going to exhibit saturation, okay? Because the exciting current becomes it increases by a log scale. Right? It increases a small change in the voltage will have a huge change in the current, the way that the characteristics is laid out. Now, this example is derived from SEL's article called Beyond the Knee Point, a practical guide to CT saturation. So rest assured these are good and accurate examples. Now, if mistakes are found, they will be described at generalpack.com. Now, in the next part, we will be discussing uh, the CT burden and the CT class ratings in much more greater detail. Now, if you find this topic useful and enjoyable, uh, regardless if you're a student or a professional, uh, please do consider subscribing to generalpack.com and consider becoming our patron at patreon.com slash generalpack. Uh, that way we can continue to create these really high quality power systems, uh, technical power system video tutorials free for everyone and everywhere. Thank you.